Hey there, Smarty fans, especially parents and educators. We've got something special for you, and it's not just another exciting episode of Who Smarted. It's a chance for you to help shape the future of our show. We're on a mission to make Who Smarted even better for both our brilliant young listeners and their amazing parents and educators. That's why we're inviting you to participate in our exclusive first ever Who Smarted survey to let us know what's working and where we can improve. So, parents and educators, grab a cup of your favorite beverage, cozy up, and take a few minutes to fill out our survey. Head over to whosmarted.com and click survey. Together, let's make Who Smarted the best it can be. Thanks for being an awesome part of our smarting community. And remember, the survey is at whosmarted.com. Just click survey. Psst. Hey, smarty pants. I'm meeting up with my old dinosaur hunting buddy, Robert Maroon, for another adventure. Today, we're in the wild, tracking an animal that's been around since the dinosaur. See if you can guess what it is. It's long and low to the ground, with short, stumpy legs. It's got a huge mouth with a super powerful jaw, filled with sharp, jagged teeth. And they're equally at home on land and in the water. Any guesses? Did you say the alligator? Or perhaps you said crocodile, mate. Either way, you're right. If you remember our episode on dino relatives, we mentioned both alligators and crocodiles haven't changed much over the past 150 million years. So the crocodiles roaming around most of the southern United States look exactly like the crocodiles that the dinosaurs used to see. Except it's the alligator that's roaming most of the southern U.S., not the crocodile. Either way, what we're doing is very dangerous. Alligators have been known to attack people. So, if you see one of these green-skinned creatures slithering or swimming towards you, or even anywhere near you, it's best to stay away. Actually, crocodiles are the green ones. Well, more olive or tan. Alligators are black or grey. And crocs are more likely to attack, though you still don't want to mess with a gator. I'd stay away from both. Look, there's one now. One what? An alligator or a crocodile? Now's our chance. Quick, follow me. But you just said to stay away. Now time for chit-chat, mate. This way. Oh, no. The horror. What's wrong? Is there a crocodile or alligator in this playground? Run, kids, run! No, look right in the center. It's a croc. You mean the crocodile sprinkler shooting water out of its mouth? Yeah! We ran through the jungle to see a crocodile sprinkler. Hey, it's a better way to point out what makes a crocodile a crocodile without getting eaten. Uh, okay. But look, it's a croc. You said that already. No, I mean they got it all wrong. Because it's wearing sunglasses? No, look at the sign above it. Yeah, it says one cool croc. But it ain't a crocodile. Look at its snout and teeth. It's clearly a gator. That's it. We're going to find some real alligators. You mean crocodiles? Uh, Those two. But first, let's get some ice cream. It's a scorcher. Two vanilla cones, please. You mind paying for it? I left my wallet in the Jeep. Sure. Okay, Smarty Pants, while Maroon eats his ice cream, I've got three questions for you. How can you tell the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? Where can you find each of them? And why are these dangerous creatures so important to our world? It's time for another whiff of science on... Who smarted? Who smarted? Who smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science or history? Listen up, everyone. We make smarting lots of fun. And who's smarted? Hey, Smarty Pants. We're standing on a dock waiting for a ride to take us through the habitat of one of nature's most dangerous creatures, the crocodile. Alligator. Hang on. Smarty Pants, are you thinking the same thing I am? Aren't crocs and gators basically the same? They're both huge reptiles with big jaws, lots of teeth. They live on land and in water. And they've been around since the dinos. So why is it such a big deal what we call them? All 
Well, that may be true, mate, and a lot of people mix them up. But the fact is, they're very different creatures. And most times, they don't even live together. Say you're in Louisiana, Texas, North Carolina, or as far as eastern China, and you say to me, see you later, alligator. How should I respond? Uh, in a while, crocodile. Nope. I'd say hooroo, mate. Hooroo, mate? I don't think anyone says that in China. No, but they shouldn't be saying anything about crocodiles either. While those states and China have heaps of alligators, there aren't any crocs there. Now, say you're in Africa, Southeast Asia, South or Central America, or my native Australia, and you want to say goodbye, what would you say? I have no idea. Repeat after me. You too, smarties. Ready? You'd say... Hooroo, mate. See you tomorrow. Hooroo, mate. See you tomorrow. To which I'd say, in a while, crocodile. See, in those parts of the world, you can't say, see you later, alligator, because there ain't no gators. But there are crocs. Uh... Fun fact, there's only one place in the entire world where you can find both crocodiles and alligators. Smarty Pants, can you guess the one spot in the world where alligators and crocodiles live together? Here's a hint. It's in the southernmost state in the United States of America. Did you say Florida? Good on you, mate. South Florida, to be exact, in the wild wetlands known as the Everglades. Which happens to be where we are. I asked my reptile expert cousin, Allie, to take us on a tour in her airboat. Hi, Allie. Hey, Maroon. Y'all ready to see some crocs and gators? Let's do it to it. So, wait, you two are cousins? Yeah. What's so strange? No, it's just you're very Australian and she's very Floridian. Bless your heart. Maroon and I are distant relatives. Our family split more than a hundred years ago when my great-great-great-grandparents moved to America and his stayed in Australia. That's kind of like what happened with alligators and crocodiles. Except their family split 80 million years ago, before the dinosaurs went extinct. These creatures don't change much over time, which is why they're so similar. But with a trained eye, you can tell them apart. Now, look at that alligator resting on a log over there. You see its snout? That big, long thing with teeth. Yeah, I see it, and I'm glad it's way over there. Well, an alligator's snout is broad, round, and U-shaped. And when its mouth is closed, you can see only its upper teeth. That's because its lower jaw is a little bit smaller than its upper. On the other hand, a crocodile has a longer, narrower snout that's more pointed and V-shaped. Its upper and lower jaws are about the same size, so when Croc's mouth is closed, you see some bottom teeth, too. It kind of gives an evil smile. And those sharp teeth? They ain't for chewing, mate. (gasps) That's one thing Crocs and gators have in common. They use their teeth to bite into animals and hold them. Sometimes they tear their food into smaller chunks, but most times they'll just swallow their prey whole. Yeah, I think I'll stay far away. What do they eat? All kinds of things, from itty-bitty fish to great big buffalo. And, yeah, the occasional human. Here's a cool thing. You know how you lose your baby teeth and grow adult teeth? But if you lose an adult tooth, that's it. It's gone. Crocodiles and alligators have an unlimited number of teeth. So if one pops out, another one grows in. Over and over again. Wonderful. Can we talk about something other than their terrifying teeth? Where are the crocodiles anyways? I'm only seeing alligators here. That's because we're in freshwater, sweetie. Gators love it. (sighs) Freshwater is found in rivers, lakes, and streams. Crocodiles can live in freshwater, but they prefer saltier waters, the kind found in bays, coves, and some swamps. The Everglades is a special place because it has both fresh water and salt water. I'll head towards the salt water now. Can you guess where the salt comes from? Smarty Pants, can you guess what gives the Everglades its salt water? Is it A, the Gulf of Mexico, B, 
Florida's largest lake, Lake Okeechobee, C, the Pacific Ocean, or D, a giant shaker of salt? The ocean does have heaps of salt water, mate, but the Pacific is nowhere near Florida. I reckon some of you smarty pants remember me saying fresh water can be found in lakes. And Lake Okeechobee is full of fresh water. Which means the answer is A, the Gulf of Mexico. Crocodiles are often found in swamps and other salty waters near the Gulf along the South Florida coast. Look, I see one over yonder. Crikey, look at that long, narrow snout and those big, sharp upper and lower teeth. Nasty things. You can easily imagine those digging into your leg. Ain't that right, narrator? I'm trying not to imagine that. Are we safe here? Didn't you say earlier that crocodiles are more likely to attack? Relax. I know how to keep us safe. That's important to remember. Never, ever go near an alligator or crocodile without a trained expert like myself. Also, while the crocodile is known to attack humans in Africa and Australia, over here in the States, they're a lot less aggressive. In fact, in Florida, it's an alligator that's more likely to attack you. But that doesn't happen often. I'm still keeping my distance. Me too. All this talk about alligator and crocodile attacks makes me wonder, who'd win in a fight between them? Who's the better beast? That's a toughie, but I'd have to say... Hold on, hold on. Smarty Pants, can you guess who'd win in a fight? An alligator or a crocodile? The answer is right after this quick break. Hey, Smarties, trusty narrator here. I had a unique challenge recently. I needed to learn German for a friend's wedding in just a few weeks. That's when I found Babbel. Thanks to Babbel, I'm well on my way to holding my own in German conversations and just in time for the wedding. Babbel makes learning a new language engaging and practical. It's not just about words. It's about real conversations that you can actually use. And Here's a special deal for our listeners. Right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash smarted. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash smarted. It's spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash smarted. Rules and restrictions may apply. Join me on this language learning journey with Babbel. Auf Wiedersehen and Let's embrace new conversations together. Hello, Smarty listeners. Trusty here, home after a long day of smarting, and boy, am I hungry. The question is, what to cook? Do I make crispy chicken parmesan? Or yummy salsa verde enchiladas? Or mouth-watering chicken sausage spaghetti bolognese? Now, I know what you're thinking. Trusty, how can you possibly cook such amazing, delicious, restaurant-worthy meals after a long day? It's easy. Just say hello to HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit, and it is literally the best thing ever. Each week, I choose from over 45 scrumptious chef-crafted recipes online. Then, when my box arrives, I have everything I need for easy-to-make, hearty, healthy, delicious meals that I just know you and your family will love. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, HelloFresh wants to give you free breakfast for life. Just go to HelloFresh.com slash SmartedFree and use code SmartedFree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash SmartedFree with code SmartedFree. Now back to Who's Smarted? So... Who'd win in a reptile wrestling match? An alligator or a crocodile? They don't really fight much. Ah, but let's say they did. If they did fight, crocodiles are usually larger and more aggressive than alligators, so I'd say the crocodile. Ha! I knew it! You owe me an ice cream narrator. Did we even bet? Of course, there's one beast that's a huge threat to gators and crocs. Smarty Pants. Do you know? Shout out your guesses. I heard rhinos, hippos, pythons, Godzilla. So what is it? Humans. Humans hunt crocs and gators so much, both families are in danger. Even though they've been around millions of years. Recent laws have cut back on hunting, 
but many still do it illegally. Not to mention, when developers build on wetlands, they destroy the habitat of alligators and crocodiles. A shame, considering they do so much for the world. They do? I thought they were just mean and scary. Listen, mate, take the Nile crocodile, one of the nastiest creatures on the earth. It actually helps the environment by eating the river's catfish. Without crocodiles, them catfish would eat up many of the other fish that the birds rely on for food. Some 40 bird species would starve without the crocodile, and gators here in the States also keep the animal population stable. Plus, they dig holes and trails that end up becoming homes to fish and marine life, which are food for many animals, including humans. We should all be grateful these creatures exist. Well, made it back safely. Later, gators. In a while, crocodile. Hooroo to you. A big shout out to Emiliano and Isabella in Hammond, Indiana. Thanks so much for listening to Who Smarted while eating breakfast. Pass the cereal, please. This episode, Gators vs. Crocs, was written by Dave Beaudry and voiced by Brandon Bayless, Sophie Plitt, and this guy, Jerry Colbert. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. Who Smarted is recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studios. Our associate producer is Max Kamaski. The theme song is by Brian Suarez, with lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. This is an Atomic Entertainment production. Who Smarted? Hey there, Smarty fans, especially parents and educators. We've got something special for you, and it's not just another exciting episode of Who Smarted. It's a chance for you to help shape the future of our show. We're on a mission to make Who Smarted even better for both our brilliant young listeners and their amazing parents and educators. That's why we're inviting you to participate in our exclusive first ever Who Smarted survey to let us know what's working and where we can improve. So parents and educators, grab a cup of your favorite beverage, cozy up, and take a few minutes to fill out our survey. Head over to whosmarted.com and click survey. Together, let's make Who Smarted the best it can be. Thanks for being an awesome part of our smarting community. And remember, the survey is at whosmarted.com. Just click survey.